Separation anxiety is something that a lot of puppies and dogs suffer from. The main thought process that goes on with the dog's brain when they have separation anxiety is fear. A fear that my owner is leaving and they're never coming back. And that's what creates the anxiety. When I hear about dogs that have issues with barking, with digging, with destructive issues, sometimes even house training issues, those are usually all symptoms of separation anxiety. The separation anxiety is what's leading to dogs doing those things. So yes, while we can address those individual behavior issues, we need to first make sure that it's not the underlying separation anxiety that's causing them. Because if it is, we gotta fix that first. So our goal here is to change the way the dog thinks and associates us leaving. We're gonna turn us humans leaving our dog alone into a positive thing. Or at the very least, we want the dog to be content with us leaving. So here's the treatment for separation anxiety. Number one, we start paying attention to the way we leave the dog and to the way we come home and see the dog. One of the biggest mistakes humans make is that when we're gonna leave the dog alone, we turn it into this big, huge, dramatic exit. We're getting ready to go, and then we get down on the dog's face. Okay, bye, bye, I'm gonna see you later. You pick up, boy, good boy. We pet him, we pet him, and we slowly go out the door, and then we open the door back, and we check back in, and we wave goodbye. And this whole performance is just getting the dog more anxious. You're getting him all worked up, and then you're leaving, and now he's in this emotional state where he's, he's just all excited and now you're gone and he doesn't know what to do. When it's time to leave, you just go. You can say bye dog and that's it. We don't want us leaving to become this big production that gets the dog worked up. And same thing goes for when you come home. I know you've had a long day at work and you're excited to see your dog after being gone all day, but when you come home and you act like you won the lotto and you're petting the dog and he's jumping on you and you're talking baby voice to him, you're again teaching the dog that when you come home, it's a huge thing. You're getting the dog into a routine of every time you leave, then waiting and expecting this huge, crazy celebration when you come home. And that builds the dog's anxiety. So when you come home, for the first five minutes at least, you act very boring. I walk in the door, hi dog. You pet him on the head for a second, and you basically ignore him. Not forever, but at least three to five minutes. And the reason that we wait for this time is it's gonna separate the action of us coming home with our excitement and play of being with the dog. So after three to five minutes, the dog's calmed down, they've settled in, then you can go over and you can be as happy and excited as you want and pet him and play with him and give him treats, whatever you want. But we need to separate those first three to five minutes with nice, calm behavior. Now dogs are creatures of habit, they love routines. And when you have a dog with separation anxiety, one of the most important things is to get our dog into as consistent of a routine as possible. This means trying to feed them at the same time, trying to take them for walks at the same time, they're bathroom schedule at the same time. Anytime that there's lots of different variations going on, that can lead to more separation anxiety in the dog because life is very unpredictable then. They don't know what's happening. They don't know when you're going, when you're coming, when they're eating, when they're pooping. So try to get into a consistent routine as much as possible. Of course, real life is hard, right? People have jobs, you got your own plans and stuff, but as much as possible, try to get to a routine for your dog that you can stick to and that's realistic for your life. Now, when we leave a dog alone, one of their main focuses is thinking about their owners. Where'd my owner go? When are they coming back? Are they coming back? So what we wanna do is in a very clear way, tell the dog, hey, think about this instead when I'm gone. And one of the best ways to do that is puzzle toys. Toys that you can shove food into and then the dog has to work on them and figure out how do I get the food out. A dog that is working on a puzzle toy is not barking, is not digging, is not destroying things. This is the clearest way that we have to communicate to our dog, hey, this is what I want you to do when I'm not home. And it's a self-reinforcer. Every single time a food comes out, it's training the dog that chewing on my toy is a good thing. Chewing on my toy is better than barking. Chewing on my toy is better than digging holes in the backyard. Puzzle toys are one of the most powerful tools we have for controlling a dog's behavior when we're not home. And if you wanna take it a step further, I would start getting special puzzle toys that our dog only gets when we leave. And then on top of that, those special puzzle toys only get filled with special food. And I'm not talking about dog kibble or dog treats you're getting at the pet store. I want you to fill them with tiny pieces of chicken, of hot dogs, of cheese, steak. And the only time your dog ever gets those high level rewards is when you're going to leave and when they're inside those puzzle toys. So all of a sudden with just this one trick, we change our dog from going, 
oh my god, my owners are leaving, oh no, to now, oh my god, my owners are leaving, chicken, cheese, toys. We make us leaving something good because the dog gets the best things in the world. His crazy puzzle toys with chicken in it that he never gets any other time except when we leave. I'll leave a link in the description below for some of my favorite puzzle toys. Check those out if you need some ideas. Now another thing are scents. It's been proven that the scent of lavender can help dogs to remain calm. So if you've got a good flower store nearby, try to pick up some fresh lavender, put that out, make sure it's high enough up somewhere where the dog's not gonna actually be able to get to it and you know potentially eat it. But just having it in, in the room that your dog stays or throughout the house, that as that scent goes through the house, that can help your dog to stay calm. Now there also are things like calming pheromones that are either plugins into the wall or collars the dog wears. And these can be quite effective as well for helping a dog with separation anxiety. Personally, I prefer the sprays over the collars. I just think anytime that a dog has to wear anything more, is less comfortable for the dog, but it's also a bit of a hazard if we're not home. We don't want the collar accidentally getting stuck on something. Who knows? I always like to be extra cautious. So if you're gonna go the pheromone route, I would try the spray first. I'll also put a link to that in the description as well. Now let's talk about music. There have been some studies and evidence that suggests that classical music actually has a calming effect on our dog's brain. So it's pretty easy nowadays. You can leave a phone out, you can leave your TV on, you find some kind of classical music, and you let that play for your dog while you're not home. I've actually seen quite a bit of success with this. So definitely give this one a try. Now, another idea that's a bit newer is something called a thunder shirt. What a thunder shirt is, is essentially just a shirt the dog wears that's nice and tight, and it kind of gives them a swaddled feeling, almost like a baby. There have been some studies done on the effectiveness of these. There were signs that these did actually help dogs with anxious behaviors. Researchers noticed things like lack of stress signals, such as yawning, licking the lips, and they even noticed some things such as lowered heart rates under certain conditions. So I do think thunder shirts are worth a try. The only caution I have for thunder shirts is that you need to be careful of the climate you live in or the temperature, at least, of your house or apartment. Remember, dogs are not designed by nature to wear clothing. And when we put clothing on our dog, it can affect the body temperature of our dog and how they manage their heat. The absolute last thing I want is you coming home to a dead dog who had heat stroke because we left shirts on them in super hot weather. So as long as you live in a place, either with air conditioning in your house or that stays cool, then I'm okay with leaving a thunder shirt on to try on our dog during the day. I'll also leave a link in the description for thunder shirts if you wanna take a look at them. Another part of treatment for separation anxiety is making sure our dog has plenty of physical exercise. When a dog is under exercise, imagine like a chemical building up in their brain. And when that chemical is maxed out, it's the equivalent of us humans having 50 cups of coffee and then 20 Red Bulls on top of that. Oh my God, you got so much energy, you got so much caffeine, you don't even know what to do because you can't focus. That is what happens when a dog is physically under exercise and that can then lead to anxious behaviors. So making sure we're taking our dog out for, in a perfect world, two walks a day, or at least one outing where the dog can just run and burn off that energy is very, 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 very important. Now, there are some natural supplements you can give your dogs that have calming effects. I'll leave some links to them in the description below. These are kind of hit and miss to be perfectly honest with you though. I've seen some dog owners use these with their dogs and they work like magic. And I've also seen some dog owners use them and it has absolutely zero effect on the dog. I've yet to be able to figure out any sort of rhyme or reason why it works on some dogs and why on some dogs it doesn't do anything, but there's no harm in it. So if you wanna give supplements a try, I think it's okay. The last thing I wanna talk about is actual prescription medication from your veterinarian for a dog with separation anxiety. This has become more popular in recent years, and I'm okay with it under one circumstance and one circumstance only. The only time that we get prescription medication for a dog with anxiety is when a dog is so anxious they're not able to eat. If you leave that puzzle toy out for your dog and you come home and that toy still is full of food, that means that our dog is at a level of anxiety that is so insanely high. We do need to do something to be able to bring it down at least to a level where they can then eat and we can work on training. Just like for humans, prescription medication is not a fix. It is a tool we use to then allow us to train the dog. The medications they use for dogs are the same things as they use for humans. Things like Xanax, Zoloft, it's the same medication. And those same medications, just like they have side effects for humans, also have side effects for dogs. So if we're going to use those medications, we have to go into it with a short-term mindset that we're only gonna use these to allow the dog to be able to practice all of these other behavioral issues, particularly eating from the puzzle toys when we're gone. 
And the goal is to wean the dog off of that medication as soon as possible. So if your dog is so anxious they're not able to eat, then I am okay with trying medication for a short term to allow us to do all the other training exercises I mentioned in this video. So give all these things a try if you have a dog with separation anxiety and you should see some results pretty quick. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you ever need a little extra help training your dog, check out my website, brightdog.com. See you next time.